On March the 16th, Helen Ziller had tweeted saying for those claiming a legacy of colonialism was only negative, think of our independent judiciary, transport infrastructure, piped water, etc. But soon after an outrage, Azilla retracted from her tweet and apologised, saying, I apologise unreservedly for a tweet that may have come across as a defence of colonialism. It was not. But during a heated debate last Tuesday in the provincial legislature, Zilla came out guns blazing. NC and EFF MPs called for Zilla's removal, but Zilla sought to draw similarities between her colonialism tweets and EFF leader Julius Malema's comments relating to the white people. She questioned why there are different public reactions to both statements. The Premier defended her tweets and accused critics of having a political agenda. It is the greatest tragedy today, 23 years into democracy, Speaker, that race has become South Africa's predominant reference point. More than that, Julius Malema has generously reminded us that the EFF is not yet calling for whites to be slaughtered. There was a ripple of anger about this, but nothing like the response to my simple statement of fact. There has been a lot of sophistry, even from some intelligent critics, drawing loony analogies between what I said and the outer bonds relationship to Nazism. In the 1980s, when I was one of its ardent supporters, I realized that the ANC had two camps, one racial nationalist, the other Marxist. There was no space for people who believed in non-racialism, an open society, and a market economy. That is why I joined the DP, and today I'm in the DA. We can't shut down this debate. It is one we need to have so that we do not slip further down this scapegoating slope. I'm glad my tweet brought it to the surface, because it is indeed of urgent national importance. And now joining me in studio to further unpack this is Tsepo Khadima, political analyst. A very good evening to you, sir, and thank you so much for your time. Good evening. And now, uh, can we say that uh, Zilla is above the party because she still continues to uh, hold the office while going through uh, a disciplinary uh, hearing? Well, I think what uh, the decision was announced today by uh, the DA leader, Musi Mayamani, just simply confirms that uh, the DA speaks in forked tongues depending on what really the situation is. When it pertains to them, then uh, they will want to demand that there must be due process, uh, which then respects the rights of the person who is uh, accused or who is, uh, uh, in this case, alleged to have committed this uh, you know, misdemeanors against the constitution of the DA. And when is their opponents and political opponent, the chief one being the African National Congress, they always uh, demand that uh, any due process rights should be uh, forfeited. And um, yeah, so it, it confirms that. But I just listened to, I mean, to that cop out about the independent judiciary that is as a result of colonialism, it's absolute nonsense. History doesn't bear the facts. To start with, uh, the concept of the rule of law did not originate in England. In fact, the English were given the rule of law by the Romans, who themselves got the rule of law from the original Hebrews, who were not Caucasians. That is a matter of history. The original Hebrews are not Caucasian. So I just do not see how anybody can go and distort history in that manner and they and go and give us that cop out. And now if we were to look at that, the fact that uh, the original Hebrews were not Caucasian, and when we look at the history of uh, this continent, and uh, if we look in terms of uh, history spanning over 3,000 years, you clearly can see that indigenous law of uh, this continent, you know, by and large, is similar to that law which they then adopted, uh, particularly from England, who then became uh, the colonizers of most of the world, including South Africa. So that it is. However, on the other hand, just reflecting on really the decision by the Democratic Alliance, what, what for me I find to be uh, uh, very amusing is the fact that 
we are seeing solidarity by the leadership of the Democratic Alliance in as far as this matter is concerned because they know that should they take any adverse action against Helen Zilla, they are going to lose the votes and that is something that they will protect at all cost to the hilt. But contrast that with the behavior and the conduct we are seeing in terms of the ANC leadership who have got zero solidarity however. You've got uh, multiplicity of diverse voices within the leadership and that can only cause you to wonder that uh, you know, is perhaps maybe the DA a lot more organized and a lot more streetwise, a lot more savvy politically than uh, the ANC has been. If you can find the leadership of the ANC at the highest level, not fully appreciating the facts and, and, and what is at hand, I think uh, the ANC members out there, they need to worry and they need to worry, they need to lose sleep at night. Because here, similar situation. If this situation was in the ANC. We saw the ANC going to take drastic action against Marius Fransman, untenable action that they took against Andile Lungisa, and that is going to cost them in the votes. DA there, they show that maybe they're a little bit more uh, streetwise, as I say, and a lot more politically savvy in the manner in which they approach in this uh, matters of politics. Mm. And was there a need um, for the party's federal legal commission to do an investigation? Could we look at this as some kind of a, a, a delaying tactic? It is nothing but a delaying tactic because when you say that you are going to do an investigation, the question that uh, must be asked is that, well, the person who's doing an investigation, what are they armed with to investigate what? Because when you've got the, your terms of reference, you are going to look in certain specific areas to be able to make up your case. And I can assure you that uh, so far, the manner in which the Democratic Alliance approached this issue, they are uh, choreographing the investigation to reach an ultimate end of exoneration of Helen Zilla. And don't be surprised when uh, she's found not guilty and that uh, it can be business as usual where she's the actual leader and not Musi Maiman. Mm. And now uh, Zilla had also said that um, there are similarities uh, between her colonialism tweets and uh, EFF Julius Malem's comments relating uh, to the white people. Yeah, and that just uh, confirms that uh, in Helen Zilla, we're going to see uh, somebody who is unrepentant and somebody who is emboldened to increase the uh, racist rhetoric. And that is unfortunately the state of affairs we sit in in this country. And uh, South Africans, as usual, they will continue to be tolerant of this uh, disgraceful conduct. Mm. All right, and now uh, joining me also in studio is um, National Convener, a black uh, first, uh, land first, uh, um, Andy Lemuetama. Very good evening to you, sir, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And now, um, do you also believe, like uh, the ANC has said, that uh, Zilla is above the party because uh, she still um, uh, continues to hold the office while going to face a disciplinary hearing? No, well, we believe that uh, Helen Zile of course, is the leader of uh, the Democratic Alliance. Uh, Musi Maimani is the front man. Uh, they brought him with the hope that they will attract black votes. But the truth of the matter, black people have not voted for the DA. Therefore, uh, Musi Maimani's utility for the DA is uh, in serious question. It is, uh, from our perspective as BLF, the utterances of Helen Zile are not out of sync with the party beliefs. DA is a racist, anti-black a white supremacist organization that represents the interests of colonialists and land thieves. And uh, for a while, uh, Helen Zille has not been uh, assuring her constituency, the white constituency, we stole our land, which is racist, which is colonial, that the DA is uh, on their side, is still speaking on their behalf. In fact, uh, Helen Zille and the key leaders of the DA have been worried that perhaps these white people, their constituency, their voters might defect to uh, the Freedom Front. Therefore, this utterances are not a mistake, are not um, said out of uh, anger. They were, they were calculated, it's clear, calculated, premeditated uh, uh, utterances to assure the racist constituency of the DA. What we have done as BLF is to open uh, criminal cases against Helen Zille. We have, in fact, three cases with the Human Rights Commission, with the Equality Court in the High Court, 
in uh, uh, Cape Town and also with the police in Hillbro, uh, uh, a case of racism. We think this is a matter really to be dealt uh, as such. The DA will not uh, punish, uh, will not uh, uh, find uh, guilty. In fact, we know that uh, Musi Maimani was in London last week. And uh, uh, some people say, and we believe there might be some truth in that, that in London, Musi Maiman was given instructions that she, he needs to back off, or he must just play some game, uh, but not uh, antagonize Ellen Zile too much, including, of course, the instruction to uh, unite with EFF and the uh, other reactionary forces uh, to try to inst uh, instigate our people against President Zuma, who is moving more and more towards a radical direction. So, as far as the DA is concerned, that's not a surprise. And we must not confuse matters. Helen Zille has not said anything outside of the belief system of the ideology of the DA. The DA is colonial, is anti-black, is white supremacist, and Helen Zille represents that voice. Mm. Now, uh, here you have opened uh, three cases. Um, what punishment would you have rather wanted to uh, uh, see um, after Zille had tweeted the Actually, those uh, our movement, Black First, Land First, is clear that th these individual acts of racism are made possible by institutionalized racism in this country. So white people have the power to be racist because of institutional power. And this institutionalized power comes with from the land question, is essentially. The fa as long as black people are landless in their own country, are going to be victims of racism. That's the key question. So if Helen Zille and the DA are serious about dealing with racism, not Helen Zille's utterances alone, as if they are dealing from the institutionalized power of white people, they'll have to return our land. That is what we want, really. That will be the best uh, show of remorse. White people in this country, 23 years later, have not returned the land. They have not said they are sorry. They have not returned our wealth. So we must stop treating individual white people as if they are doing something uh, out of the ordinary. They operate from within the white supremacist reality which was created out of our land disposition and making us into laborers in our own country. Today we go and work in mines, we work in their gardens and kitchens. We are slaves in our own country because we are a dispossessed people. As long as we are a dispossessed people, we are going to be victims of racism. So for us it's not just uh, Helen Zille. In fact, we propose as BLF that racist organizations such as the DA, Afri Forum, AWB must be banned. You will not find in Germany today Nazi organizations because uh, Nazism is banned. You will not find organizations or individuals denying the Holocaust. In South Africa, it's shocking that Helen Zille can actually come and say uh, uh, colonialism was not so bad. Colonialism, which was based on genocide, mass murdering and slaughter of our people. A enslavement of our people. She can deny it and with no consequences. Those consequences should not come from the DA. Should have come already from our legal system to say you cannot spit in the faces of our people like that. You cannot uh, spit in the pain of black people like that. But I think we must also send a message to the black members of the DA. How are you supporting a party which believes in colonialism? That is something that black people and the DA have to think about very carefully because they've been used against other black people as we're going to see with the march to the Tuli House. Black people in the DA, they must know they are supporting a party which is anti-black and therefore they have some responsibility uh, in what is happening as far as the DA being a racist anti-black organization. Mm. Now, Mr. Khadim, uh, we're hearing um, uh, uh, Mr. Mutama saying that um, they would like to uh, ban uh, such parties as the DA as well as Afro Forum. Uh, would it be possible to have something like this, ban the DA? Well, I think the conduct itself is first to be, needs to be redefined and uh, also a law or legislative tools be put in place to ensure that we can deal with it. As I was saying earlier, the problem we have in South Africa is that we've become far too tolerant and far too forgiving. We forgive the unpardonable sins and nobody ever is punished for that. So it is for that reason that people like Helen Zeller can feel emboldened to even uh, continue to increase that racist rhetoric uh, disguised as uh, glorifying what colonialism has brought to this continent and which cannot be supported by fact. And uh, well, you know, we have a country that we have today, but you, you cannot continue to tolerate those that believe that somehow there is something good that came out of colonialism. There isn't. But for as long as we tolerate it, if we do not legislate to have heavy uh, punishment, really severe punitive sanction against the, uh, uh, the offenders, 
then unfortunately this is going to continue over and over again. And for whatever reason that it is, um, I mean, we, we, we're sitting here today, we, we saw yesterday one of the most upset thing come, you know, we've got this constitution that everybody speaks how glorious it is and how it must be protected. And yet we have uh, sympathizers to um, the ideology that the people like, the uh, parties like the T DA carry of even banning this very same station which we are on, which could be coming up with alternative views, informing the nation and educating the nation, and if others have got a dissenting view or a, a, a differing view, they should come here also and hold course on their arguments and not to go and uh, say, well, we are going to ban that station or ask that station, when the Constitution, in fact, does not even allow that. Because the media in South Africa is the only business that is specifically provi uh, protected by the Constitution. There is no other business other than the media that is protected by the Constitution. But you've got people who claim, and then here we are now, 36 hours later, the Democratic Alliance has not come up and uh, defended media freedom, and why ANN7 cannot be threatened, intimidated, in the manner that it has been. Helen Sussman Foundation have not come out. Uh, the South African Press Association, uh, what is it, the, uh, the Press Council has not come up. The Editors Forum, South African Editors Forum, they are toothless dogs. They have not come up. In fact, their members were applauding in that deplorable, despicable conduct by the former minister on Friday when he was intimidating and harassing. And yesterday, again, they were applauding the, such despicable conduct. And none of them have come up and said, well, this is not acceptable because our constitution as a country, in fact, provides protection for freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And if you disagree, well, the platform is here. Why go for such? And so the point that we are making is this. We are seeing more and more of erosion of our human rights or our liberties. And the more that uh, the citizen remains ignorant of this lurking threat, the more we can uh, lament for the future of our children who will wake up in a country whereby there are no more rights. Mm. And now looking at uh, the decision that my money has come up with, uh, what could be the outcomes of uh, this disciplinary hearing? Well, they haven't said that. And when you read, uh, I think, in the documents of the Democratic Alliance in terms of what, what possible censure they can pass if she is found guilty, and I can't see how she cannot be found guilty, um, unless uh, already the choreography is leading to her exoneration. They haven't said what uh, sanction she should be facing. And again, it deals with what? I mean, they is by design that they have not designed that the punishment must be severe. We can see with that uh, Diane Kola Barnard, who herself was glorifying uh, Fervut and uh, you know, all of that. She got 20,000 rent and she's still a member of parliament and she's enjoying life and she's still contributing. And pr probably privately she continues to express the same views that she expressed because at the time she never apologized or admitted that she saw error in the sentiments that she says, well, if it had not been that somebody took the screenshot of her Facebook post and shared it with the nation, she would have continued in the private space. She never once came out to the public and said, listen, I've seen the error of my ways. There is nothing good about Fervood. There is nothing good about apartheid. There is nothing good about the, 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 the past. But she never said that. Same thing with Helen Zilla mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what she's doing. She continues, by the way, to be unrepentant, to maintain that, uh, well, she was a supporter of the ANC and she left them to join the DP then in 1978 because she thought that the ANC was no longer doing what it's supposed to It is absolute nonsense. She has never been an activist in the African National Congress. There is no historical facts to, uh, to, to back that argument up or mm. that assertion. However, what we are seeing here is that we are seeing somebody who is carrying publicly Mr. the Haribu, image just, of many that are privately thinking so. Mm, I'm just going to hold you over there. We are running out of time, but I want to just get um, Mr. Andy Lemmutama's uh, last remarks on this conversation. No, I mean, the important thing is that uh, Helen Zille and the DA 
are going to continue with their anti-black racism. What we want from them is uh, land return. That is the best apology they can give our people. And our message is to black people who support the DA to distance themselves from that party. They must not be used by the DA. Right now they want a civil war because uh, they are worried that President Zuma is finally dealing with the issues of land, is finally dealing with issues of uh, radical economic transformation. And our message also to the economic freedom fighters is this, uh, Julius Malema, are you going to be marching and supporting colonialists against President Zuma instead of supporting his call for land to be returned to our people? We, we ask all black people to distance themselves from these uh, activities led by uh, Praveen Godan, who is a representative of white monopoly capital. He's doing all this, Praveen Godan. Of course, already we have argued that he's corrupt. We have argued that he's captured. We have argued that he's conflicted. We've given evidence, even in, in front of the High Court. BLF has a matter in front of High Court against Praveen Godan. We have a criminal matter against Praveen Godan. He is not a clean person. And in fact, uh, he's there. He's benefit directly from the collusion and corruption of white banks where he has shares. He is a good thing that he's gone. Our people must not allow themselves to be used. And that is why they want to shut down AN7, because this is the only station that speaks the truth. And they are worried that our people will get an alternative view and the truth about the true state of the of the nation, what is happening here. And that's why they want a censorship. The, 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 the media freedom in South Africa is under attack. A Praveen Godan is leading a fascist movement, which is going to take all our freedoms because for Praveen Godan and those that goes with him, including the so-called Save South Africa, the primary objective is profit. They want profits. They don't care for the well-being of our people. They protect white capital. They have basically made sure that the truth of the corruption of white capital, which is about billions of rent stolen from our country every day, has been shut down. When Praveen was a minister, the South African Reserve Bank did not want to move one inch in dealing with corruption of white capital stealing from the nation. So we are saying to our people, stay away from Praveen Godan, stay away from Julius Malema's calls and the DA. These are against radical transformation. We call on our people to support President Zuma. We want land back. We want the economy All back. Right. Ages Thank of imperialism we might hasten to add. All right. Yeah.